today we're going to take a look at some other information about the conditional. So the first thing that we want to remember is what a conditional statement is. Um, a conditional statement is a statement that has the if-then connective. So, this is a statement that can be written in if then form and remember that the notation for this is p arrow q there are three different types of statements that sort of relate to the original conditional statement. The first is the converse, and the converse is actually the argument p arrow q in reverse. So this is q arrow p. The inverse is the same ordering p and q, but we negate both of them. And the contrapositive both switches the order and it negates them. So this is tilde q implies tilde p. And there are some very interesting equivalences um, between these. So the first thing I want to make note is to take note uh, these arguments are not all the same. However, there are some of them that are. So let's take a look at which equivalences are in fact equal. So the original statement, which was p arrow q, it's actually equivalent to its contrapositive, which was tilde q arrow tilde p. And the converse, which was q arrow p, is equivalent to the inverse. And interestingly enough, um, well, let me write what the inverse is first. It was tilde p, arrow tilde q. If you'll actually take a look and notice that the converse, if you were to take its statement and form the contrapositive of the converse, it would be the inverse. So the real reality is that a statement and its contrapositive are equivalent. It just so happens that the converse and the inverse of a statement are contrapositives of each other. Alright, so what we're going to do on these examples is we're going to take the given conditional statement and we're going to write the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive in the if-then form. And in some cases it might be necessary to actually change the form of the original statement to be an if-then form so it's easier to work with. Alright, so the first one we're going to look at is a horrible pickup line. Um, if beauty were a minute, then you'd be an hour. So this is actually already in if-then form, so we don't have to do any rewriting. We're just going to jump right in and start with the converse. So the converse takes the argument and it writes it in reverse order. So we start with the if still, but we'd say something like this. If you were an hour, then beauty would be a minute. And notice we have sort of um, a little bit of language change going on here, just sort of in the verb tense and things like that to make a sentence that actually flows. Um, but the structure doesn't change. Okay. All right, so the inverse is to take the statement written as is and to put negations into it. So if beauty were not a minute, then you would not be an hour. And the last one, the contrapositive,
leaves the statement in the same, um, or takes the statement and changes the order, and it changes it to be negations. So we'd start with if, and we'd start with the second part about you being an hour, and we'd say a negation. So if you were not an hour, or you could say if you are not an hour, then beauty is not or would not be a minute. We'll say is not a minute. And I know this one is a little bit awkward. Um, to make sense of the way that these are written is a very awkward statement. And it is just because of the nature of, um, of the argument itself, the nature of this original compound statement. But I just wanted you to focus on this one about changing the order and making negations. The next one we can actually talk about how the equivalencies work because it's a little bit more direct. So if you take a look at the next one, it says milk contains calcium. The problem, of course, with this one is it is I don't see an if or a then. So the first thing I want to do is I want to rewrite my statement. I want to write my statement in if-then form. So we can take this statement and we can write an if-then form something like this. If it is milk, then it contains calcium. And this statement is actually, of course, a true statement. Milk does contain calcium, so, so we can go with this statement. And that will help us as we take a look at the converse, interest, and contrapositive to see how, in fact, that these are not all the same statement. So we're going to do the converse first, just go in order. So our converse is to take the statement and to switch the order. So it would say something like this. If it contains calcium, then it is milk. And of course the problem is that that is not a true statement. There are plenty of things that contain calcium that are not milk. Um, yogurt, cheese, certain cereals, Nutri-Cream bars, um, if I'm remembering right, I think maybe even broccoli. There's lots of things that contain calcium that are not milk. So this is not a true statement, whereas the first one was. We'll do inverse now. Inverse again takes the original statement and, it and it, instead of switching the order, it switches, the, it, tw it switches them to be the negations. So it says something like this. If it is not milk, then it does not contain calcium. And of course that's false in exactly the same way that the converse was false. If it is not milk, but what if it's, you know, that Nutri-Green bar, or that calcium fortified orange juice, or that whatever. Um, well, those items do contain calcium, and this one, would, this statement says that they shouldn't, and in fact that is a false statement. And we'll do the contrapositive. So the contrapositive takes it and switches the order, and it switches it to be negations. So instead of saying if it is milk, we say if it, and we talk about the calcium first, and we do it negation. So if it does not contain calcium, then it is not milk. And that would be a true statement. So if you looked, in other words, at a uh, nutrition label on a product and all you were given was the nutrition label and it showed zero calcium, then you would be able to for sure say, well, it isn't milk. Because if I did have milk, it would have calcium listed on that nutrition label. So that a contrapositive is equivalent to the first statement. All right, this one is um, sort of a little bit more symbolic in nature, but I want to talk about what the symbols look like when you do the converse, inverse, and contrapositive for just a general statement. So the converse switches the order. So the switching the order here would be Q, arrow, and then tilde P because that was the original statement. The inverse makes them negations. So if I negate tilde P, that's P, and I do an arrow, and if I negate Q, that's tilde Q. And then the contrapositive, 
both switches the order and it negates it. So we switch the order, so the Q part will come first, but it will be the negation of Q. P becomes second, and it is the negation of tilde P, which would be P. So in symbolic form, we have something like this. Now, as you're working, um, you may have noticed sort of on that one about milk, we had to first translate it into P arrow Q. Um, we had to turn it into an if P then Q form. Um, so I want to talk about some different common translations, um, some different things you can see or statements that can be written that are, in fact, conditional statements. So the first ones uh, you have seen before, if P, then Q. And uh, a very close relative to that one is if P, Q. So it's the same statement, just doesn't have a then between them. You've heard me say over and over again, P implies Q. Now here's one we have not seen and we will see very shortly. It's P only if Q. It is an awkward one to read, a very different sort of one, because it looks like the if is connected to the Q, but it isn't. It's actually that only if is sort of a reverse of where the if should be. If should actually be associated with P in this case. So if I say P only if Q, that's equivalent to meaning P implies Q, not Q implies P. Um, a couple others, these are two you very seldom see, but if you run into them, I, you should be aware of them. We would have P is sufficient for Q. In other words, it's enough for P to happen that Q will automatically follow. And then Q is necessary for P. Again, in other words, that if P happens, it necessarily follows that Q would happen. Um, one we've seen a couple different times is all P, R, Q. We've seen that happen with an example you had, all women were once girls. I think we've talked about all dogs go to heaven. And in some sense, the milk example we just did was very much like that all milk contains calcium. We didn't have the word all there, but it had the same sort of structure to it. And then another one we've seen, of course, is Q if P. And that just is an ordering issue. The if comes in the middle, but it doesn't say only if, right? It has just plain old if. The P is still associated then with the if, so P implies Q or P arrow Q would be the equivalence to this. The last thing we're going to take a look at today is we're going to take a look at a few statements, three of them, and writing them in if-then form. So the first one we notice is that all p-then-q statement. It says all whole numbers are integers. And if we want to rewrite this, we would have the word if, and it would say something like this. If it is a whole number, then it is an integer. If P then Q, all P are Q. That's the structure on this one. The second one is the weird one that I mentioned, because you'll notice it's got this only if business in the middle. And let's read the statement, and then we're going to put the statement down in the if then form and talk about why that actually makes sense. This one says the principal will hire more teachers only if the school board approves. Only if. So what I was mentioning before is that this actually means the if is associated with the first part. If the principal hires, and again I know I changed the verb tense, that's fine, hires more teachers then the school board approved this. Again, I know I changed my verb tense. That's not the problem here. There, there isn't a concern about that. The verb tense was just changed because it makes more sense in terms of the, the structure and the language for our English language. Um, but what I want you to understand here is this only if. So this says the principal will hire more teachers only if the school board approves. So what this does not say is it does not say if the school board approves hiring more teachers that the principal necessarily will. It just says that if he does in fact hire them, he had permission to do so. Right? 
because that's different. If the school board is petitioned and they approve it, and then he's allowed to hire and finds out he doesn't want an additional teacher or something like that, that's fine. But he doesn't get to hire anybody unless he has permission or approval to do so. And that's what the same statement says in if-then form below. If the principal hires those teachers, then he had the approval to do so. Whoops, I left the then out there. Then the school board approved. All right, the last one is a little bit unusual just because it's... Uh, talking again about numbers, and we haven't done a lot with numbers in this particular math class thus far. Don't worry, we'll get there. Um, in another couple sections, we're going to be doing some other things, and they are going to have some numbers involved. Um, but this one says, the square of a two-digit number whose unit digit is 5 will end in 25. So I actually have a typo right there. We'll fix it. We'll end in 25. All right, so we're going to take this statement and put it in if-then form. And as we're looking at this, the if part is actually talking about what the number two-digit number is like. The two-digit number has a unit digit of five. So if a two-digit number ends in a five, okay, so we're talking about numbers like 15, 25, 35, 45, and so forth, then what we're told about it is that the square of that number will end in 25. So then the square of that number will end in 25. Right, so a square, if you remember, is multiplying a number by itself. So if you multiply 2 numbers, well, one number by itself, so the number 25, like 25 times 25, it will end in 25. Or 35 times 35, the last two digits will be 25. If you multiplied 95 times 95, it will end in 25, and that's, that's the structure that we're trying to create, and this if-then form would do that for us.